Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well because today we're taking another deep dive, another look into uh, so you want to get into some classic progressive rock. This is part two. I'll link part one down in the description and the, the card up, up above as well. Uh, and these are four albums I've picked out again today that maybe they're not my favorite by an artist. Maybe they're not my favorite within the genre, but they definitely uh, can serve as sort of a, a signal and an emblem of classic progressive rock in one form or another. Some of them are a little more experimental than others. Some of them are more, you know, historically important for the genre as a whole than others. All of them are great albums, though. I'm not going to recommend anything that I don't really love listening to. So with that, we're going to start with King Crimson's In the Court of the King, Crimson King. Here we are there. Look at that. This is probably something, maybe you've, you've seen this in record stores before, or you've seen it kind of pop up. There's the back there. It's a, a gatefold album. Well, I mean, this, this edition on vinyl, not, not always a gatefold. I'll pop it up. We got five tracks on here. There's the, the Crimson King on the inside. And on the cover is the, the first track I want to talk about. Well, first, let's talk about the band. Uh, but here's the 21st Century Schizoid Band. So this album came out in 1969, and a lot of people tout it as maybe the first progressive rock album. Um, I think that's very much a simplification of not just prog rock as a genre, but for any musical genre, it's really hard to say this is the definitive start of, you know, X, Y, Z. But it's certainly, I think, one that really solidified a lot of the tropes of the genre we would see moving forward. And it definitely has a very specific sound. It's sometimes symphonic, but how would you describe King, Kring, King Crimson? They've just got a lot of noises going on and a lot of different eras and they there's nothing else like them even now uh if you're thinking about modern bands maybe king gizzard is a is a good comparison some of those free jazz or not free jazz uh, jazz fusiony uh you know very discordant and metallic sounding sounding bands but what you have on here 1969 there's nothing like this going on at the time and for a long time after the band had a few recordings prior to this, um, but not as the band we would come to know it, um, kind of formed by two brothers. So this band, King Crimson, they've kind of been known for a revolving cast. They've got a few classic lineups, a few classic periods. Some people say this is a classic lineup. It only lasts for one album, so it's really hard to say it's a classic lineup. Uh, but you have Greg Lake from a band we're going to take a look at later on lead vocal and bass, as well as some of the production. Uh, Robert Fripp on electric and acoustic guitars and production. Ian McDonald, who's on saxophone, flute, clarinet, bass clarinet, mellotron, harpsichord, piano, organ, vibraphone, backing vocals, and the co-lead vocals on I Talk to the Wind and a bit of the production as well. Michael Giles on drums and percussion with some backing vocals. And then Peter Sinfield on, on doing some of the lyrics and some of the production as well. That was a lot. And what do you got on here? You have five tracks that all flow together beautifully, eh, hauntingly. You've got the opener, 21st Century Schizoid Man, which is, uh, this is heavy. This is like proto metal here. This wouldn't sound out of place if it was on one of the first few Black Sabbath albums. Uh, it, it's whirlwind. It's kind of jazzy. There's these angry, angry saxophones with this very memorable hook. It sets the stage for a cacophonous, you know, uh, cacophonous adventure. I don't know if there's a better way or a less pompous way to put that, but that's what you got on here. Then you get to tracks like Epitaph um, and Moonchild that are, are flowing a little bit uh, free jazz or experimental inspired. And they just show this whole other side that doesn't necessarily sound like it comes from the same band that, that did 21st Century Schizoid Man. But on the other hand, it sounds exactly like that band. Um, and this is just a fascinating album. Um, it's a terrifying cover. It's a fascinating album. I think if you want to look at some of the roots of the genre, but some of the roots of where the genre can branch out to and shoot off to. Maybe you've tried... Some of the ones that are more symphonic and follow that, you know, more classic rocky sound like Rush or something, and you want something different, more more abrasive or just more experimental. That's that's where I would recommend. That's where we're going to go, and we're going to kind of follow that uh, hard rock train, but in a very different way. We're going to look at Uriah Heep's "Look at Yourself." Let's see if I can get the camera in frame. There, that's you. That's you right there. There you go. Look at yourself. Here's the back. See the band. Awesome, got the lyrics. 
Uh, so this came came out in 1971. Uh, this is just a blazing, hard, heavy rock album with a lot of prog in it. This is the band. I wouldn't say Uriah Heep's always been a prog band, but they definitely have a progressive rock period. Uh, they're more in line with kind of that early hard rock. Uh, if you think in lines of, you know, Deep Purple, you know, a lot of that kind of family tree sort of stuff, Rainbow, those sorts of groups. Um, but there's definitely even those groups that have progressive rock periods, and you see that see that here as well. Um, when the album first came out, it was kind of seen as a, a high point with the band's career. It's often tied touted as one of their favorites. It's one of my favorites from the band, uh, along with Demons and Wizards, which is another great album that comes out the following year. Um, so Uriah Heep formed in 1969. On this album, they've also got lineup changes throughout the years, as a lot of these classic bands do. So you have David Byron, who's the lead vocalist at the time, on everything but the title track, Look At Yourself. Um, he does backups on that one. You have Mick Box on lead guitar, acoustic guitar. Ken Hensley, who uh, does organ and piano, one of the best in the game, I think. Uh, the ability to make an organ sounds so uh electrified and electric and passionate and and necessary um very few people can do that like he does so he does organ piano slide guitar acoustic guitar backing vocals and lead vocals on look at yourself you have paul newton on bass and ian clark on drums what do you got on here well i talked about the title track that's a great one as well i think in terms of you know uh we're talking about progressive rock here so you have the 10 minute long track july morning that's a really really great track um, i'm gonna have another playlist attached down below to check out just a few tracks from each album on spotify um, july morning is going to be on there i want to be free that's on side one side one you only have the three tracks that's a great one tears in my eyes shadows of grief i think is my other favorite track on here that's a really really good song uh and i just keep saying that that's a good song love machine what should be done these are all it's all just a fantastic album. Uh, but I think if you're into that classic rock sound, you know, Deep Purple, uh, Rainbow, you know, um, White Snake to some degree, but maybe not quite as much, check this out. This is, you've got some blazing organ work on here, heavy guitars, um, and it's got that, you know, classic hard rock, early heavy metal feel, but we're, we're still exploring kind of the classics of the genre. So my third choice for today is... I would say a little controversial because it sort of emblemizes, sort of represents the best and the worst of progressive rock as a genre. When people are often uh, turned off from prog rock, it's because, you know, super lengthy tracks that don't really go anywhere. Uh, it leans, it borrows a lot from, you know, classical compositional work. And some people are turned off by that, you know, extended um artsy pieces that just seem to be art for art's sake kind of thing and you get that certainly on brain salad surgery that's my face now uh by emerson lake and palmer made up of keith emerson greg lake who we talked about earlier and um carl palmer the three piece and it's amazing when you think about what three folks can do on here kind of touted as a, mi a minor super group at the time um but then afterwards going forward i think more so because this is um you know elp they have a short shortish career you know a short classic period but this is the high point for me on here um i'll say as well they're an easy band to get into they've got sort of five classic albums that you can check out maybe four if you're going to be even more specific um you can leave off one that's it's a live album, but of entirely new compositions. Um, so it's very easy to get into them. In fact, a new box set just came out that collects all five of these classic period albums. So if you're like, oh, should I get into them? That's an easy way to do that. Uh, or you can stream it. I'm not your dad. I don't know. Um, so Brain Salad Surgery comes out 1973. So, you know, Prague is, Prague is everywhere at the time. And the band, you can say nothing like this. They were kind of leading up to this, but just the, the tracks on here, you've got the sidelong epic Carn Evil 9, which is a, a lengthier piece about an evil carnival, about the show that never ends. Uh, and that's really cool. That's really cool. You've also got uh, slower, slower things, you know, that showcase the band doing what they do. You've got Still You Turn Me On. That's like a, a softer, more introspective piece. 
Uh, and then you've got early work using electronic drums and, and synthesizers. And I think if you're interested to see power bands in the prog rock genre utilizing new technology at the time, you know, today we take a lot of these digital tools for granted. You know, we can make a drum kit sound like anything. We can make a keyboard sound like anything. And these were the folks that were saying, like, well, what can we do with that in terms of rock composition or like, what can we, what can we transform this into? So if you're into electronic drums, there's some great tracks on here. If you're into fantastic keyboard work, there's great tracks. And actually vocally, I think uh, Greg Lake is just a, a fantastic vocalist. And this is, this is a great album to check out. Again, like I said, if you're turned off by this one, I wouldn't start here. But I would, if you're on your progressive rock journey, this is definitely one that you would have to check out sooner or later. The band, certainly, but I think this is probably the, the high point for the band. And then the final album we're going to look at today, obviously there's so many more classic prog rock albums to check out. This is part two, and I'm only talking about four albums. Um, but I wanted to highlight uh, an American band. A lot of people look at progressive rock as a specifically European genre. But last time we looked at Rush from Canada. Today we're looking at a group from the States. And this is Left Overture by Kansas. And the thing about Kansas is they saw a lot of airplay um obviously we're very familiar with the song carry on my wayward son and that's a, a blazing track i think a lot of people they know the chorus they hear it on tv but they don't realize like yeah that's a that's a light lengthy track that's got blazing keyboards that's got all kinds of stuff going on that's frog rock that hit the hit the radio airwaves at the time um so the album came out in 1976 it was the band's fourth album uh, and it remains today to be their highest selling album so on this band or, or on this album, we've got Steve Walsh doing organ piano, some synthesizer work, vibraphone, uh, and lead and backing vocals. We've got Carrie Livgren doing uh, electric guitar, piano, clavinet, Moog synthesizers, Oberheim and ARP synthesizers. Again, a lot of progressive rock folks along with, as well as jazz fusion folks at the time experimenting with new technology, new, new pathways to make music. Uh, Robbie Steinhardt doing uh, violin viola and does lead vocals on Miracle Out of Nowhere and uh, Cheyenne Anthem. I really like that track. That's a good one. And backup vocals across the board. Got uh, Rich Williams doing electric and acoustic guitars. Dave Hope doing bass and Phil Ehart on drums and percussion. So I talked about uh, Carry On My Wayward Son. That's sort of a quintessential track from the band, uh, classic rock and progressive rock as a whole. Um, super catchy, lots of catchy hooks. Other tracks on here are Miracles Out of Nowhere. That's a very versatile song. I think it shows the band taking another another sort of a rock direction. Um, as well, this band, certainly after this point, and at some point they become more pop-oriented, AOR-oriented group with still fantastic songs, but they're going to leave that progressive element behind. So I think they've found this, this sweet spot of being very accessible, having a lot of great poppy hooks and rocky hooks, but also being a little more complex as well. So that was four albums. So we've took a look at, you know, In the Court of the Crimson King by King Crimson. Took a look at uh, Uriah Heep's Look at Yourself. We did uh, Brain Salad Surgery by Emerson, Lake and Palmer and Left Overture by Kansas. So that's, I mean, now that's total eight albums. And I think it's not the kind of thing where you have to listen to these and be like, now I get it. Now I get progressive rock. But I think there's a lot of genres out there, um, not just progressive rock, but so many out there that feel inaccessible or feel like you don't know where to start. Is this the best album from this band? Is this the, the best entry point for this band? So when doing these lists, I'm trying to think of, you know, if I was new to a genre, you know, there's a bunch of genres I'm exploring. Um, and I want to know, like, how, which album do I pick? Do I have to start at an artist's, you know, first point? Uh, where where do I enter? So I'm hoping that these videos can kind of help folks with that. And again, I've got that playlist attached down below. So you can kind of check out um, just a, a track or two from each of these albums. But otherwise, that was it. Four classic progressive rock albums first. So you want to get into progressive rock part two. I hope you have a great day. And I hope it's progressive. I immediately regret that. Have a great day. Bye.